It's like they've got a heartbeat and they're breathing, but nobody is home. Knock, knock, is anybody home? So there I was one day, and as I had hundreds of times before, I'm sat before the charts, the three ringed binders that are basically the life stories of the residents of a nursing home that I was contracted to consult at. And I'm flipping through the pages, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, you know, checking off Prilosec, 40 milligrams, once daily, Atorvastatin, 80 milligrams, once daily, doing my daily regimen. And in the other room, I could hear what sounded to be a drug commercial. And as I'm there flipping through the pages, checking for blocked orders and so forth, to satisfy my curiosity, I had to put down the pen and paper and go to the other room and see what was going on. To be honest with you, I will never forget what I saw. It truly was a twilight zone moment. See, sat before me were multiple residents of this nursing home, of the behavioral health unit. These folks were all, to put it nicely, cognitively impaired, or to put it bluntly, demented. There was maybe nine, 10 residents of this home, and they're sat there in their respective, you know, chairs and wheelchairs, sat in front of like one of those old classic TVs, like, like the square television sets, man. And what is being played is incredibly disturbing. So it's a drug commercial. The world is full of make or break moments, especially if you have postmenopausal osteoporosis and a high risk for fracture. For this novel drug that helps elderly folks fight off sarcopenia, it's just like a fancy medical term for loss of muscle mass, right? Which a lot of these folks clearly <laughs> epitomized. And I'm stood there and I'm just realizing the fact that these residents have no idea what they're being exposed to. And from that day forward, I realized how systematic of a problem not only drug commercials are, but frankly, the pharma first paradigm that is part and parcel to Western medicine. Prolia can cause serious side effects like low blood calcium, serious infections, which could need hospitalization, skin problems, and severe bone, joint, or muscle pain. Don't wait for a break. Call your doctor now and ask how Prolia can help you. So I'm not sure if you guys knew this or not, but the United States is one of only two countries that actually allows direct to consumer. And I know it's like disturbing, right? To even consider it a consumer of pharmaceutical products. And what happens is you have people who are exposed to these commercials and then they're the one introducing the idea, planting the proverbial seed, if you will, into the minds of their otherwise well-intended doctors who, to be honest with you, as you know, frankly, a doctor of pharmacy myself, you end up being so busy, like it's just one resident after another, one chart after another, one foot in front of the other that you don't actually have the luxury of time to actually study, you know, quote unquote, novel drugs. And I think that's one thing we should bold italicize and underscore is the fact that we do have new drugs. And what does that tell you? I mean, if pharmaceuticals were so efficacious, if they were so incredibly effective, why is it the case that we do have new novel drugs seemingly as frequent as the next iPhone? I mean, why is that the case? And what I would submit to you guys is that it's because just like with the iPhone, I don't know, what is it, the 14 or 15? God only knows, right? It's incredibly lucrative. It's incredibly profitable for pharmaceutical companies to market the next latest and greatest drug entity. 
And having a background in biochemistry, what, what I would tell you is that these drugs are actually basically cousins of drugs that have already been marketed before them. Literal cousin, <laughs> like chemical cousins that have the same active moiety, right? It's just, just a fancy word for like the same chemical structure of the active ingredient, but they just have like slightly analogous differences that have made to them uh, just so that legally they can sort of circumnavigate the patents that may be pending of uh, like a prior pharmaceutical company, right? And so it's experiences like this that I've had over the last half decade and having overcome a rare chronic inflammatory disease of my own that, I mean, if you Google, it has no recognized cure. It's called eosinophilic esophagitis, which you may not have, but maybe you have some sort of chronic inflammatory condition, or frankly, even maybe a condition that you never even related because your doctor never told you is related to this underlying inflammation or maybe you're taking a drug that is supposed to be prophylactic right it's supposed to prevent some future tragic event like a heart attack maybe you're taking a cholesterol lowering med well guess what guys statins hydroxymethylglutarol coa reductase inhibitors right hmg coa maybe statins you've heard of these drugs are padding the pockets of pharmaceutical companies. And as I'm stood there reviewing the resident chart of someone who is literally demented 20 feet to my left, and I see that they're taking a medication, namely a statin that is lipophilic and it literally crosses the blood brain barrier and is recognized to give rise to dementia. It's just something that you cannot unsee. And for those of you who have seen my content before, you guys know how freaking passionate I am about getting healthy. And if I'm being honest, if it wasn't for the decade of struggle, trying to even swallow a bite of food and just all of the anxiety of the prospect of such, if it wasn't that, if it wasn't EOE, if it wasn't eosinophilic esophagitis that lit a fire under my ass, to take my health seriously, then what it was, was the last half decade of me traveling around the state of Maine, you know, all spiffy with a button up shirt and a tie, representing the long-term care pharmacy that I was contracted with. <laughs> it was walking down those hallways. It was interacting with residents. It was seeing for myself firsthand the litany of medications, the outright polypharmacy that was burdening these individuals. It was the prescriptions that became the problem that quite frankly made me discontented to see that man because these people's lights were being dimmed. It's like they've got a heartbeat and they're breathing but nobody is home. Knock knock is anybody home. Well, that's what it doesn't look like to me. It doesn't look like there's actually anybody there. And you know, it's one thing to say that about the residents of the homes. So you're like, oh yeah, but what about like the people that take care of them? Right, except they've dimmed their own light too. And this is the epiphany that I had that I really hope you guys let land. What I realized is that if I follow in that same track I take the same path that the people did before me. I realized as I'm sat there reviewing a resident who's demented 20 feet to my left, I realized that that was going to be me. Actually, not just as a fairy tale idea, like actually, dude, I was gonna be that person. I literally had nightmares about this where I would visualize like, like in the dream, man, there would be like these fat, sick, and frankly, infertile, women, right? Like these nurses and these CNAs at these homes that were uh, taking care of me because like I couldn't lift a finger. And just the prospect of that like made me really distraught and frankly was a negative motivation for me to put my house in order as it were. So if you guys see, if you have the foresight to see the writing on the wall and see what's going to happen Maybe not two or three years down the road, 
but one or two decades. Or maybe if you've got a fire that you're trying to put out right now, but the doctor's orders didn't actually offer that extinguishing factor for you, I'm gonna give you a few action steps right now that is going to change the game and really just give you and your loved ones the unfair advantage that I feel belongs in your hands. So the first thing that you guys can do, the absolute most important first step that you can take, it's sort of like addition via subtraction. And it's to subtract the seed oils before they subtract you. Soybean oil. Maybe you've heard of this before. Or maybe you've heard of vegetable oil. And that's just like this colloquial term that most often points to soybean oil. And this is an industrial oil that is extracted in a factory that literally resembles an oil refinery. It's refined, it's bleached, it's deodorized, it's treated with so much pressure and heat that the final product is actually putrid and rancid and they actually use chemical deodorizers, neutralizers to neutralize the scent because it would otherwise be too pungent. He wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Step one, don't go within a mile of these oils and it's not enough to just not cook with them. If you do need a cooking oil, opt for either butter as the best animal-based option or coconut oil as the best plant-derived option. But see, it's not just enough to not cook in them. You also have to avoid processed, packaged foods that come in bags, boxes, cans, and containers. Because with American ingenuity, we can take these refined bleach and deodorized oils add a little bit of sugar and refined grains, and we can render seemingly ad infinitum Franken foods. That's step number one. Step number two, frankly, equally important, but you really should do them in tandem, is to drink just a shot of 100% pomegranate juice on the daily. So what is that? Like maybe half a cup or for you metric folks, like a hundred milliliters. That's really all it takes because of the potent antioxidants in pomegranate juice that have not only been shown prospectively to prevent the progression of atherosclerosis, that's plaque buildup in your arteries, but to actively reverse it, like physically remove plaque from your arteries. The aforementioned dementia patient, yeah, it works the same ways in the arteries that perfuse your brain as it does the arteries that perfuse your heart. So this has systemic widespread benefits. Subtract the seed oils and add a shot of pomegranate juice every single day. And that's the number one thing you can do to maintain your health and prevent chronic disease into old age. Guys, I love you all very much. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. Drop a comment down below. What are you struggling with currently in terms of your health and happiness? How can I be of more service to you? You know, I'm really trying to illuminate and exemplify what it means to be a high vibe person. And I see so much potential in you that I hope you realize what is possible. Guys, comment down below, like and subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, friends, find your freedom. Peace.